Ah, summer. Time to hit the open road and explore the boundless beauty this country has to offer. And, of course, your kids in the backseat arguing over whether you can lick your own elbow. Traffic hasn't moved in 48 minutes, and every time you roll down the window, more mosquitoes invade the car. <sighs> Fortunately, a McDonald's is never far away, where you can get a fresh beef quarter pounder, the easier way to enjoy summer. A participating U.S. McDonald's excludes Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. I always get confused because I don't know which... Okay, because that lights out, so that's that's the thing we use to play sound effects, right? Yeah. So, Brad, I'm going to bring up... When we open this show, I'm going to bring up the text I got from yesterday. Okay. All right, let's do it. You're listening to The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. It's nice and simple, you know? <laughs> now, where's all the bells and whistles, man? Sorry, Do we have yeah. some of these? <laughs> DJ Horns. Oh, perfect. My name is Brad Nolan. Um, I host the show. Really, I just, I'm just i standing here to push buttons for Brian Moot, who's right. also on the show. Because if you gave me too many buttons, I'd do stuff like this. DJ Brian. The equipment used to push that button is nowhere near Brian, but he's six <laughs> four. So I got long arms. He just reaches over into my space. I think that's the fun part about uh, what I love about my my identity and role in radio is that I get access to all this, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in equipment that I just disrespect by loading up one sound. <laughs> Because I've always wanted to be that DJ, right? Who just was like, bah, 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 boo, boo, boo. and just, people just love it. Yeah, just yeah. and like, and uh, fog machines are going off, and uh, I'd wear a helmet <laughs> of some <laughs> sort because that's the DJ thing to do. I go back and forth on that actually. The DJ helmets. You do? Why? I mean, I think they should wear helmets. I I do now because then the my favorite DJs are like Daft Punk. I like uh, Dead Mal Five. <laughs> dead mouse <laughs> I love when people call him dead mouth five because they always they just sound so dumb they're trying to be speak from a position of like oh my favorite DJ is that dead mouth five I'm like are you dead mouse that guy my thing is I do it on purpose to see if anyone will correct me and no one has ever corrected me <laughs> They just look at me like, oh, poor guy. Oh, he doesn't know. And then Marshmallow met him recently, very pleasant. And for a long time, I couldn't figure out why. I was like, DJ should never have helmets. But then Diplo runs his dumb mouth all the time and says stupid things about Taylor Swift. And I'm like, you know what? Put a helmet back on the DJ. <laughs> You're good at pushing buttons. <laughs> Just like I'm going to be. I'm deeply impressed with your reach. I know, it's pretty impressive, right? I also got this sound effect too, Brad, so if things get real heated in here. Ooh. Yes. Coming up next. <laughs> you were, I think you were supposed to talk to me about a text that I had sent you, and you didn't tell me Ooh, uh, yeah. exactly what was going to happen there, but we I, I can't wait to get to that. I'm excited to get to that. Brad, I've never been more excited for a text I've ever gotten from you. But first, <laughs> uh, tell people what your social media account is. I am at Moot Points. Uh, find me on Twitter. I'm funny there. <laughs> That's his favorite social network. <laughs> uh, and you can find me at Brad Nolan. Brian Moot is a stand-up comedian. Brad Nolan is a stand-up dad. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Stand-up dad, huh, Brad? Yeah, I think so. Stand-up dad. <laughs> ah, well, we'll find out when we talk about this text message I received from you under questioning. <laughs> so yesterday, I get a message from Brad. And he would like to know um, our mutual friend, who Brad was living with for a while when he moved from Seattle to Los Angeles, Aubrey, wanted Aubrey's phone number, wanted his contact information. That's a boy. Uh, yes, it is a boy. Aubrey's which is key boy. for the story. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason, well, Brad, why don't you tell everyone, why did you need Aubrey's information? Because you moved out of Aubrey's house, and now you live right. with, your, with your fantastic Should wife I... and your daughter. I mean, here we go. I'm going to just hit this. So there I was, <laughs> sitting in my brand new apartment with my beautiful wife and my beautiful daughter. And she was folding the laundry. She does it so much better than me. She's she's a pro at it. I just kind of grab clothes and throw them into a pile. Kind of mush them into a flat. Yeah. That is true, man. Women have, and they're very particular about it, especially mm -hmm. with towels. Like, yeah. they, they have a, a way they want the towels folded. And I'm like, hey, as long as it's not on the floor, I mean, yeah. it's fine. Just Should fold fine. it in half. So she's very good at this skill. And she finds a sock. She's like, I don't know whose sock this is. And I was like, I've never seen that sock in my life. 
and then she finds a thong. Oh boy! <laughs> well, that took it up a notch now, didn't it? <laughs> and then she finds another lacy rocker girl thong. <laughs> right, so the first one you're thinking, I mean, if it was me, now we live wildly different lives because you're married <laughs> and you have a daughter, but for me, if it was my girlfriend folding the laundry, I could be like, that could be anybody's. Could it have been in the laundry room? You yeah, know? We, and we do have a community laundry room, so, so that's the first place I and, went. And a thong can be jammed up underneath the rim. We've all, every guy's been there and made that excuse. Of course. And I was like, that's, you know. And then, another sock matching Uh-oh. to the other one. And finally. It says make it way more intense. Yeah. A ripped up shirt that could only be worn by a hot chick who would wear the rest of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not like a ripped up shirt like uh, white trash at the public no. dock at the lake, just pulled up in a Trans Am. No. And the shirt's only ripped because it's 18 generations old Mm-mm. and it's a Leonard Skinner sleeveless. No, this is like stylish girl cut on purpose. <laughs> and she looks at me and she goes, now we have to have a conversation. Because <laughs> you guys have been long distance for like a yeah, month, so, month and so, a half, two months. Month and a half. We've been apart. We've had problems being apart in the past in her defense. She uh, has plenty yes. to be worried about. Right. But, I mean, you, you like myself, uh, are a kind of a reformed a-hole. Reformed a-hole. Which completely. is a good place to be. You know what behavior not yes. to do. And you're like, no, 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 no. I know where you're going with this. And I, trust me this time. <laughs> you should see me sit on that bed. I was like, for the first time in my life, I'm a good guy. I Five swear. years ago, you were have a beef but i promise i'm good so then i'm going through my brain i'm like how could this have happened to me how could it's happening to me right not to my wife uh how could this have happened to me i've got two and this girl's probably very hot they're very small clothing (laughs) right and and, you know it's a whole thing and then which does matter if two big old (laughs) stained up pairs of granny panties came out she would have been like we need to have a talk for a whole different reason brad (laughs) (laughs) so i text brian um and and then because I'm looking for the former roommate's right. uh, information. I'm looking through my and text. You, you right text now. my brother too, Patrick, yes. which is even funnier because you got no reply from and him. Zero reply. And then when I did reply, he was just like, "This made me laugh." I was like, "Okay, great." Right, still need the contact yep, info, still buddy. Still need that. <laughs> so finally, I get Aubrey's information. I send him a picture of the outfit, very attractive outfit. Again, I'll say it. My wife agrees. Um, it says, "Hey, it's Brad Nolan. These were in my laundry, and I think they're Kate's. That's Aubrey's girlfriend." Yep. I need confirmation of that, or I'm staying on your couch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living with you again, unless you can confirm this. Uh, to, to, uh, to my wife's credit, she was super cool about it. Like Once I was like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You don't know how many times I would just pull clothes out of the washer and throw them aside in that house and put mine in. Like This is so... And then when I left, I literally just grabbed all my clothes, whatever would be in that pile, and yeah. put them in a bag, and I left. So at the end of it, she's like, this is funny if that's true. Yeah, I mean, it is. It, it's the funny part is, is that it, this is. It's only funny when you're a guy who's had like kind of that questions of being like, "Yeah, I was kind of a scumbag for a while in my life, so I'm scared." I had this happen to me once um, with a girlfriend, and I found a pair of panties in my bed. And I was like, oh, my God, it's from that one chick. Because we were kind of, like, casually dating. <laughs> and in Seattle, I was a terrible boyfriend. Yeah. I was well, literally one time I told a girl who was super sweet uh, when she told me that if I broke up with her, it would be devastating. And I was like, that's a bit dramatic, devastating. I was like, <laughs> world famine and starvation is devastating. You know, atomic <laughs> bomb devastating. Our breakup, we, you'll get over it, right? You're so a jerk. here's the thing. I found a pair of panties in my bed. And I stuffed them between the match and the box spring. And because I was like, oh my God, thank God I found those because my girlfriend would see those in the bed and then know that there was another girl that was been in this bed in the last month or so. And she's like, she goes, I almost caught, I almost blew it, almost outed myself. She goes, she goes, hey, have you seen like that pair of, God, I can't find it, but I wore this like really like sexy thong over here the other day and I, I think, I know I left without it. So have you found it? Because I, I thought it was in my bag and I'm like, Oh, yeah, I have it. She's like, where? And I was like, um, oh, uh, it's between my mattress and my box spring. She's like, why Why is it there? And I'm like, oh, I hid it from my dog so she wouldn't eat it. And I almost said, like, I almost had this moment of where I was like, oh, because I didn't think it was yours at first. And I was like, I never knew. It would have been the worst thing ever to say in the history of the world. Have you told her that story yet? <laughs> no, Lena. Oh. No, I should tell her, though. Oh, this, was, is the, this is not current girlfriend no, situation. No, God, no. You think I'd tell that story? You think I'd tell oh a story gosh. about my current girlfriend right now? I wasn't right sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I'm not going down that road. Yeah, did you not see that? No, no, I did. Oh, it, it was yeah, just yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah, you were there. The one flew out. Uh huh. And then you the caught one, it. The one flew. So one of them that stayed in the wrapper, 
I ch- I knew I was losing one of them, and I threw it, and they came out of the wrapper. Then the other one, I just threw onto the table again and caught. I caught two, and the one was out of the wrapper. So then I just took a big old bite out of that one. It so, couldn't have been more perfect. Yeah, no, it worked out really well. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Here we have Brian Moot. This better not get me in trouble with my girlfriend. And Brad Nolan. <laughs> no, my my wife wants to flip the swinger switch. Just two boys without man buns. It's true. Zero man buns in the studio. And I'm starting to think that she does want to flip that swinger switch after that, you know, after her finding the uh, Aubrey's girlfriend's underwear in your bag and being like kind of not like uh, she wasn't throwing stuff across the apartment. I'm used she to that. She was kinda oddly girl. calm. Right? Yeah. She was. It was. Yeah. Maybe a little creepy. To the point at which maybe. See, here's where I would have gone. In my mind, if my girl would be, it didn't show uh, an adequate level of rage and fury about that situation, I would think like, oh, okay, so you don't think that that's a girl that I could have, <laughs> have panties in my, in my, okay, okay, now it's a challenge. Now, I demand a level of anger and fury that meets an acceptable level. Not too much, not too little, just adequate, and you're below right now. I am fresh on the good guy train, so for me, it was more like, well... She's not getting so she totally kind of trusts me right now, but I definitely need to prove this and make this a this is okay. See, it's funny I say that I say that I want a level of rage, but then I I've come out, I've had some relationships where I mean, at one point in time I was in a relationship where I had purchased more TVs than the average sports bar. Be eight over little things. Like, who are you following on Twitter? TV broken. Really? Yeah, man, crazy. Crazy yeah. amounts of of destruction. Which leads me to an interesting story today that I've been following Closely, Brad. I know you're not into the world of sports, but this is right. a combat sport. Conor McGregor okay. in uh, the UFC. He was until last night. He was the light, uh, the the lightweight champion of the UFC of the world. Yeah, and he uh, he hasn't fought or defended his belt in 523 days or something like that. And they stripped him of it last night, and he decided to show up at the weigh-in today, the UFC Media Day weigh-in, and attacked the bus of the guys that were supposed to fight, threw a hand truck through the window, shattering the glass, uh, cut a bunch of of the people in the bus. Now that fight is canceled, but the the rumors are that there's an arrest warrant issued for Conor McGregor, so we don't know if we'll see him in the UFC again. But I think that makes, I want to see him even more now. This dude's crazy. He's my favorite. I mean, here's the thing. Like, so the the reason they stripped it is because he didn't fight. Because he hasn't fought in 500 days. Whose fault is it that he didn't fight? Is it his fault? Did he get into something that not didn't allow him to fight? Or did the UFC just not schedule stuff properly? Because that would be annoying. It's a little bit of both. The UFC, he did that fight with Floyd Mayweather, the boxing match Floyd Mayweather. But the UFC cashed in on that, too. So they're making money off it. They're just being, they're just being money hungry, and Conor McGregor wasn't having it. Okay. Called him the C word on Twitter. It said, "You have stripped me of nothing, you C words." <laughs> and then he got on his private plane, came over here, and stopped their fight. Literally. <laughs> here we have Brad Nolan. I think my daughter is probably the coolest thing that I've ever done. And Brian Moot. Kids are monsters, and especially when they're honest with you. Just two boys living in a Barbie world. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Barbie. Did I did I tell you? Okay, so my daughter. I'm Brad Nolan, by the way. That's Brian Moot. Hey. You <laughs> can hit that all show, buddy. <laughs> um, my daughter, uh, so Barbie has a has a, a little sister. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, so Barbie has a little sister. You and I work with a girl named Chelsea. Barbie's little sister's named Chelsea. Sounds like a little sister name. Yeah. My daughter met our mutual friend Chelsea and was like, Asking her all kinds of questions as if she oh, was. Oh, about Barbie? Yeah. Like about her older Bar- sister? No, about Chelsea, the little sister. Oh. She thought in real life that that Chelsea was the Chelsea. Wow. She's got blonde hair, mm-hmm. and it was, it was just a weird, weird thing. That's what, and like, and and your daughter's still in that. She she's three, right? So yeah. she's still in that 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 age where fantasy and reality are not always two distinct yes. entities. Yes, she can still weave in and out, and then she'll slowly evolve out of that uh, that fantasy world completely. But. For a few years, you'll watch the slow transition where eventually she'd have that question at that conversation at five with Chelsea. But it would be like, did you know that Barbie's little sister's named after you? 
it'd be like, she's like, I get that they're not the same people, but I want to let her know. <laughs> right. I mean, duh, dad. <laughs> but she needs to know, of course, that she's named after Chelsea and they look yeah. very similar. I'd like to let everybody know yeah, that. Yeah, no, she legitimately thinks that our mutual friend Chelsea is that Chelsea, which I thought was fascinating. It was just fascinating to me. That uh, was fascinating for me was watching the chaos that you, a um, friend Alex D, DJ Alex D, has uh, two kids as well. Mm-hmm. And the chaos that you guys have to live in is fascinating to me as an unmarried, un- a kidless man who just gets to spend all his time thinking about himself and spending <laughs> all, his, all his income. On, on Jamaican horn buzzers. For, that is my life right there. I'm like, what am I doing later? I don't even know. It'll involve drinking. Oh, I mean, man. dude, you, your daughter, I don't know how you guys do it, but th- that level of energy that a child had was unreal. It is what I imagine it would be like if you li- if you had, like, you know, the movie Step Brothers? Yeah. Like, if you had those two in your real life. Like they were just constantly yelling, constantly playing the drums, drum teabagging each other. <laughs> it's just a whole thing. Like that. Like when she gets in that mode, she's not always in that mode. That's how you handle it. I mean, sometimes she's like, "I'm gonna go to bed." And we're like, "Good night." And then, like, wait, wait, what? Okay, <laughs> yeah. geez, see you later. There we go. Every um, night, slow clap. <laughs> but at the at the thing we were at the other day, and they were running around. When she gets in that mode, it is like. She's just Will Ferrell running around yelling things, and you just have to go, mm, let it happen. It was fascinating. And also, we were it was Brad's birthday, and we were at this uh, barcade, which I think is one of the greatest inventions I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. It, it made me mad that I didn't think of it, just having all those nostalgic games that are just laying around in weird uh, storage facilities all over the country, and just let, let grown-ups still pay 25, 50, 75 cents to play these games. Problem is the people who go to barcades <laughs> on a Tuesday afternoon at five thirty pathetic losers are serious about <laughs> games. And then you got these guys who are just hitting pinball over and over, and you can just see they got the pinball stance, like slightly athletic but not too athletic because they're old and out of shape. And then you got this three-year-old weaving in and out of their legs playing hide and go seek. Oh, that was the best part. Just they hiding. Getting, they were getting oh. so mad. You could just see, like, guys getting annoyed, like, especially pinball, because, like, you could be just about to set the top score, and then all of a sudden you you kick a little early on that paddle, and the ball just barely glances off and goes right into the right into the uh, the hole, for lack of a better word <laughs> <laughs> of saying it. Man, I, I wanted to go over uh, and just interview them while I'm like, is this bothering you, this girl shriek <laughs> running around, playing, playing, weaving in between your legs uncomfortably? Full shriek factor, too. I mean, it was just like, it was bad. Oh, and just one thing I did appreciate, man, just the lack of caring about getting dirty or gross. Oh, yeah. Like, just rolling all over the floor. In public, just a nasty floor. Just doing- It's a bar. Oh, my God, yeah, your feet can stick to it. And <laughs> she just sit there, they were doing, her and the other uh, little girl were just doing snow angels. <laughs> <laughs> Snow angels, dirt angels, on a bar floor. Yeah, just complete grunge. Just like doing a doing like a, uh, a snow angel in a spring break bathroom. Yeah, and the great thing about if you look at us, we're just like, yeah, cool snow angels, dude. Like, we're like go for it, <laughs> dirt angels. <laughs> Did you know Chelsea's Barbie's little sister? <laughs> She loves spring break. Uh, I wanted to do a story about a woman dumping her body shaming boyfriend because he said she had a beer gut, but I just don't know if we could do that without a, without a girl in the room. So I think we'll skip that. <laughs> it would seem pretty much like we don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> he was just giving you a little constructive criticism. The Brian Moot Show with Brad Nolan. Right now at T-Mobile, get an awesome iPhone XR on us when you bring your family over and trade in your old device. Because whether you have mom, dad, or a friend on your mind, it's a gift so bold and brilliant, you'll want to keep it for yourself. Most importantly, it's on us in six vibrant colors. Plus, with unlimited everything from T-Mobile, the awesome iPhone XR will have everyone snapping, streaming, and sharing to their heart's content all year long. But don't wait. It's only for a limited time. So visit a store or call 1-800-T-MOBILE and get iPhone XR on us. 
If congested, customers using more than 50 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds due to prioritization. Video at 480p via 24 monthly bill credits for well-qualified customers plus tax. Qualifying trade-in, port-in, service, and finance agreement required. Contact us before canceling our credit stop and remaining balance due. 64 gigs, zero down, plus 3125 per month for 24 months. Pre-credit price, seven forty nine ninety nine zero percent APR. One offer per account. Let's consider the secret life of the innermost nesting doll. Living most of her life in the dark inside the other nesting dolls, she has plenty of time to think, if she could. Sadly, she has no brain. However, when an innermost nesting doll hears that Geico not only saves people money, but also has been providing great service for over 75 years, she thinks it's obvious you should switch. Because yes, switching to Geico is a no-brainer. Pity the innermost nesting doll and her lot in life.